and welcome to the Business Owner Spotlight. I'm your host, Stephanie Scheller, the person who finds, recruits, and I really shouldn't even say finds and recruits because what happens is I bring amazing people on the spotlight and then they're like, oh, this is so cool, and they send me other cool, amazing people, which is exactly what's happened today with Mr. Mitch. Thank you so much for joining me today. See, so I'm just happy to be here. We've already started off really well. I forgot this was like a video thing. So when I turned her on, all of a sudden, there I was with my bed head and no shirt on. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is going to be like live. So I scrambled out. And I, I'm actually naked underneath this shirt. Okay, so. Oh, my goodness. Naked underneath the shirt? Holy <laughs> no, crap. No, I have pajamas. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have pajamas. Keep this PG, right? <laughs> I got my pajamas on. Okay. Uh, all right, so Mitch, so uh, tell me a little bit about. So we, this is the first time we've chatted. We've not, we've not spoken. So I know, I know nothing. I just know that Marco said you're an amazing person. So tell me a little bit about you, what you do, and how you got to where you are. Because I always find there's an interesting story behind that. Well, it's a long story, but I'll keep it short. Um, I, I was about in my early 30s. I was, I didn't have a college degree. I was getting paid about $15 an hour at the most. I was reaching this kind of glass ceiling because I didn't have any formal education. And I came to this conclusion that the body is like the most adaptable thing in the world over a course of events. And um, I decided to take having a job off the table and find out what my body was going to do about it. And it learned how to make $15 an hour and then $25 an hour and then $80 an hour and then $100 an hour and you know, eventually got up to $800 an hour and I quit counting after that. But <clears throat> and the thing, the thing was, is because I was self-employed, every time I figured out how to increase the bar, I was a hundred percent recipient of that increase, mm -hmm. you know, and that was probably like the greatest thing that not college, not, not having a college education gave me was that it forced me to be a, an entrepreneur and from that point on, I, I have the life that all the doctors and lawyers and people that I know envy because I'm always doing something somewhere fun and I have control of my own destiny and I, I don't trade hours for dollars. Right. So, so, you know, you may call me and I may be at my ranch or you may call me and I may be deep sea fishing or you may call me and uh, no, heaven only knows where I might be, but, you know, <laughs> well, and, this is why they created cell phones, right? With really good reception. Yes, and, and, and video cameras. <laughs> and video cameras. I can catch up with you wherever you happen to yeah. be. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I so, love so I went and I bought 25 rent houses because I thought that's what I was supposed to do because they've been selling this buy and hold myth for a long time and I bought it. And what happened was, you know, they said, well, if you know, if you have a house and you're renting it for $1,000 and then you're, you only have a $600 payment, you're clearing $400 a month, right? And I said, yes, and I bought into it. Well, it's all a bunch of BS because you're not clearing $400 because they just wrote off like every liability in the world that you're responsible for, which by the way is everything. Yeah. The hot water heater, the electric, the plumbing, the stove, the door, the locks, the shower head, the faucet, the garage door, the sprinkler system, the fence, the gate, the, it just goes on and on and on and on forever. And they just acted like, like that stuff will never break. You know, you're right. gonna clear $400. And so I got 25 houses, and, but this was 20 something years ago. So I was supposed to clear $300 a house, $300 a house times 25 houses. That's supposed to be $7,500 a month. I'm supposed to make, I only needed to clear 3,500 to like pay my debts and all my living. So I thought, well, certainly if I'm trying to collect 7,500, I'll at least collect 3,500 and I'll be free. And no, I lost a thousand dollars that year. I, I remember it clearly. Like I worked the whole year and I lost almost an even one thousand dollars. And I said, you know, this is not working. So I got in a really, really, really big panic. And yet another business that Mitch Stevens started was about to fail in front of my own eyes. And I got really scared because this I had my credit and my reputation on the line. And so I hired someone with the last ten thousand dollars I had. Mind you, this was in the nineteen. I don't know, 20 years ago, mid 1990s. So $10,000 was more like $10,000. And when it's your last $10,000, it's always a lot. I don't care. Right. Yeah, you it know? doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when it's your last 10,000, it's everything you got. And the guy showed me how to owner finance my houses so I could drop the liabilities and get really good down payments to, to, to eat on up front. 
So I sold my 25 rent houses and I didn't even believe in the concept. I was really shaky on it. I thought this isn't going to work. I've wasted my 10,000. I went out there half heartedly and got all 25. I sold all 25 houses with about an average of 3000 down. Wow. So I did it in like six months. So in a six month period, I had 75 grand in the bank, which was more money than I'd ever seen in my life. And then the seven, and then the seventy five hundred that was supposed to be coming in as rent, actually started coming in and sticking in my bank account because I was the bank. If the air conditioner broke or anything broke, it wasn't my house. I had sold it on payments. They had given me ten thousand and given me three thousand down, and, and and it was their house. And if something broke, I was just owed the payment. It didn't matter whether the toilet worked or not. And right. so the seventy five hundred started hitting my bank account. And it stayed because there was no reason to write a check out. Well, yeah, now they're motivated because now they're making payments on a house as opposed to rent, rent. Payments. rent payments. Or you can kind of be like, eh, if it's late, it's late. Whereas if it's your house, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not yeah. going to risk losing all the money we paid in. That's awesome. People stopped tearing up my houses and leaving. And they started fixing up my houses and they stayed for years. And even when they left, I got a payoff. You know, I got wow. a big fat check when they left because they left, they sold it to someone and then they had to pay me off. I had a first the remainder. Yeah. So, so what you're still doing now, is this how you go deep sea fishing and hang out at the ranch and all this, all this fun stuff? I average $8,000 down now. Um, and I average $535 per month positive cash flow. And I did 1500 houses in my hometown since 96. So do a little math there real quick. <laughs> I can go anywhere I want to. Dang it. Nice. That's freaking awesome. It, so, it, it, get, it gets to the point, Stephanie, where it starts to work in reverse. Now, now I have too much money and I can go too many places I probably shouldn't go. So now I got to start policing. I got to work on the other side of me. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you know, be careful there because as soon as you say that, people start popping up and they're like, hey, I can help with the too much money issue. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, the day you want to write me a ten thousand dollar check just for being pretty, Mitch, I'm, you know, I'll send you my address. We're good. <laughs> oh, it's going to have to be more than ten thousand, as pretty as you are. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to take this guy out for coffee. All right, I <laughs> really, really uh, regret me doing these spotlights here. <laughs> I'll take him too. Come on, we'll both. Oh, uh, hey, you know what? There we go. Let's go. So I've got to ask this because. You said the word, you said it was really scary. And at some point, every entrepreneur has this moment where they go, oh, sh oh my God, like, this is really freaking No, no you were right the first time. It was, oh, shit. It, it, you know, like, <laughs> it was like, this is terrifying. How did you, I mean, it sounds like you had no way to go back. You had to make this one work. But what was it that you, like, what was it that got you through? How did you get to where you started? I, I, I started, I didn't know that I was doing it at the time, but in my first book, My Life in a Thousand Houses, Failing Forward to Financial Freedom, I had figured out, I had set myself up so that I could fail without going under. And it was called the moat theory. And so what I did was, when I was trying to get that $3,500 a month to come in so I could pay my bills, it's so that for the rest of my life, I could go out and experiment. And if I lost all that money beyond that, I still had my house and, my, and everything inside my moat paid for. My little castle, my, my horses, my chickens, my, you know, whatever. Right. So my insurance, my TV, whatever it is I thought I needed the basics, I would figure out how to get that to come in somehow. And then every day of my life after that, I could worry, I could work on getting rich or being wealthy if that's what I wanted to do. And if I went out with the extra money and I failed, it was just money at that point because I wasn't going under, I wasn't getting a divorce, they weren't taking my car, they didn't take my house because I had built this moat and I had protected this little mail this little $3,500 a month of mailbox money that comes in. Right. So that was what gave me the ability to fail forward. Like I could go out and try things. If they didn't work, I'd come back. I mean, just imagine, uh, you know, you have this castle and this drawbridge and this moat around it. And when you want to go out to the world and try to get rich, you drop the drawbridge and you charge out there. And then you get a bunch of arrows in your high knee and you run back in, you pull up the drawbridge and all your bills are paid for. And you pull out the arrows and you think to yourself, like, what did I do wrong? Why was the enemy where I didn't know they were? And I didn't know their arrows could go so far. I need to make a better plan next time I go out. and Let's see what happens then. And then I kind of recoup. I resave some more money. And then I drop the drawbridge again. I go out there but I'm better prepared now and I win or eventually I'm going to win. 
but you I need the ultimate entrepreneur over there. Basically like, you know, like let's, let's try what, try and, and try again, try again. It's, people talk about no plan B. You always go for it. The, the, the ultimate goal is just keep trying something. Something will work. Well, but I do have a plan B and the plan B was worst case scenario. I'm going to go over that drawbridge into my moat. I'm going to pull up the drawbridge where I'm safe and everything's paid for and I'm going to recoup and I'm not going to go under. I'm not going to get divorced because of financial issues. I'm not going to lose my car. I can, I can go restudy. I can hire a coach that knows how to keep arrows from hitting my butt or whatever. And, and I figured, I figured the first step in getting rich was to be able, was to get a moat that no one could penetrate so that I had a safe place to hang out. And then, then I, if getting wealthy was in the cards for me, it would happen after I had solidified my note, the, the, the income for my moat, because that would give me the rest of my life to go out there and fail and come back and fail and come back until I figured it out. Because I knew failure was part of the plan. I yeah. knew I was going to fail. I think the big problem is with a lot of entrepreneurs is they gamble it all. They put it all on the table and they roll that dice. And when it doesn't work out, it takes them years to recover. And they lose their relationships and they lose their credit and they lose their good name. And, you know, they have to move to start over where no one knows them because they just blew it, you know? Yeah. And so, I, I, I didn't want to do that. No. Well, let me, yeah, no, I think you did it. And I want to, for our listeners real quick, I want to point this out. I think one of the big keys is, is this, and this is a great, I love this interview because, you know, it, I love when we can get someone who's kind of not on the other side completely, but yeah, kind of on the other side is sitting there going, you know what, we've made it work. This is awesome. And, um, and one of the big keys is that he always had space to go back to. And could, because it is, you go out there, it's exhausting, right? Even you're fighting the, and the arrows in your high knees, you put it right. Like that sucks. You need that space. So I really want to encourage our listeners. If you don't have a space like that, you go find one, go find one. Cause that I think is one of my biggest keys that as you're talking, Mitch, I'm like, Oh, Hey, I'm, I'm seeing that in myself too. That's really, that's genius. Well, so like, so like I'm doing these rehabs or something. I think, well, I'll be done with it in, in a month and then I'll have it for sale and I'll have another 10,000 coming in and down payment and I'll have, and then, then you think, Oh no, the rehab's going to take two months now or my rehab guy just got hit by a truck and everything's off pace now. I, it's okay. My bills are paid. I just, you know, my bills are paid. I'm just not going to hit my, my timeline, but I'm not going under, I'm not getting behind because my bills are paid every month right. that 3,500 comes into the mailbox, which I actually had 7,500 which meant that I had $4,000 a month stacking up in my R&D R bank account, which is research and development, which means mm -hmm. R&D money is meant to be blown to figure out what happens. What I'm, happened, I'm, yeah. I'm like, going to spend this amount of money, and I'm, no, I'm, I, there's a good chance I'm going to lose it, but I need to see what happens when I do this. Oh, that's what happens. Okay, now how do I stop that from happening? Yeah, you know, okay. back, can you go and do it again? Um, so what is, where do you go? Where are you going from here? You, you've got your successful business, sends you the money. You've got your moat. I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, uh, well, so, so I had that going, but I was a one-man show, right? Right. There's always another level, right? And so the next level was, and I tried it like five times in a row, and I failed miserably, was how to automate the system so it didn't need me. Because I was getting burned out, tremendously burned out. I was everything. I was the bookkeeper. I was the advertiser. I was the website guy. I was the house finder, the house seller, the money finder. You know, I was everything. And you can't do it all. And you certainly can't do all of it good. And all, and all I was was a reactionist. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have to react to every different phone call. Yeah. And so, so I tried to systematize. I finally paid $30,000 to go to a mastermind. It was like $20,000 for the chair. And then... And then that didn't pay for your hotel, or your flights or anything else. So by the time you went four times that year, you spent $30,000, you know, and the, but there I went to, I went, I was in, I was in a room with 80 people that were not competing in my market. And so they would open up and they would put their whole business on the, on the, on the board and they would show how they were doing 200 houses a year. First of all, it was social proof. This guy really is doing 200 houses a year. There's no reason why you can't. I mean, because right. this guy can do it. Frankly, he's not that smart or he doesn't look that smart. He's a doofball. Look at him. He's, and he's doing 200 houses. <laughs> right. uh, you know, I'm just joking. But you know what I mean? Like, you'd see like, of course. like I can do it. I could do it, you know, for the sort of social proof. And then they'd get out and they say, well, this is the person that sits in this chair. And this is how I pay him. And this is what happens. And this is the person that sits in that chair. And they mapped out their whole office. And then, you know, when 80 people get up there and show you their business of how it's running and what they pay and what the overhead is and how they're doing everything, and then you take it home. You kind of make it your own. And today I can tell you, 
that the last 300 houses I bought in my hometown I have not seen, and I have not seen the last 300 people that bought my houses, nor have I talked to them or do I know anything about them. And so then I got bored, and so I started the educational business. And, um, you know, that made me another half a million dollars. So how profitable was it to get my business on autopilot? Well, first I thought I was going to take a cut and pay. Like if you make a million dollars, you're going to have to give up 400 so you can pay everybody to run it so you don't have to be there. But that's better than quitting because if you quit, you make zero. If you automate it and get people there and you give up $400,000 of your income, you're still making 600 out of the million. Right. But guess what happened? I made, I made more than I ever made and I didn't have to take any cut and pay. In fact, I made more than I made when I was doing it myself. Was it because they were able to do more quantity, more volume? And more quality and, and less more, mistakes. Ah, uh, because there was no emotion in it anymore. It was follow, follow the boss's system. Well, a, a lot of it was like no emotion, but the other part was they only had one task to do and they were professional on it. And they watched over that task every day it, where I was scattered brain to go everywhere and the money was going out the back door as fast as it was coming in the front door sometimes because I couldn't, I couldn't watch everything. I didn't, I couldn't have checks and balances and I wasn't, I wasn't organized. I was disheveled. And so I made, I actually thought I was going to take a cut and pay and I didn't take a cut and pay and I still paid everybody. And I, not only did I not take a cut and pay, but I, I made more than I did. And then I had all this spare time. So I opened up a business and I made like more and more and more. <laughs> it's amazing how it snowballs. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. And then I got so good at raising private money. Like I had $12 million. I couldn't buy enough houses. So I opened up a hard money business with a partner and I have like $6 million worth of hard money out in the streets of San Antonio right now. And so there's that business. I end up having like seven businesses. And then my, uh, my mini storage business has 1300 units and they owe me $92 on the first of every month on average, you know? So because I got kind of freed up and learned how to work as a CEO from the top down, I was able to start opening different businesses with the right partners and the right deals. And I, and I could spend some time to get them set up and running, and then I could leave them to start the next one. So I wake up, and I got six businesses that are all making good money. Wow. You, I, we need to go to – I want to talk with you more on this one. I know we're coming up on the end already, and, and this has been – Well, awesome. let me tell you, every year I talk to people that I don't get to meet in person. So five years ago, I started doing a vacation with Mitch. Yeah. And every year I go to a resort, and anyone who wants to come can come. I don't know what time I'm getting up. I don't know what time I'm going to bed. I don't know <laughs> – how much alcohol intake I'll be having that day or not, but I'm going to be there for like five days at this place. And it's happening May the 19th through the 23rd at Hard Rock Hotel. And if you just go to 1000houses.com forward slash Mexico dash 2018, you'll have all the details. And I got a killer price on this trip, all inclusive trip to this Hard Rock resort. Nice. Well, very, well, hey, you know what? That actually brings a big point. I know we're at the end here, and I want to ask you your best piece of advice um, for our listeners, because I always end on that, is other business owners out there who are going, holy crap, I really want to be like this guy. I want this, you know, what's your best piece of advice for them? The, the, you dropped a lot of nuggets here, but if you had to sum it up, one piece of advice that could make a difference for these guys. Golly, that's a huge subject. There's so much, but I think, <laughs> I think, Study exactly what you want to be to get on the internet and find everything, you know, study all the different strategies or whatever and, and study everything for free as much as you can because there's a ton of information on the internet. Unfortunately, yeah. some of it's bogus and you're going to have to get your radar up to understand who's bullshitting and who's not on the internet. But then you start to hone in on what you think is going to work and then you maybe buy some course at that time. But you only buy courses on the one thing. Don't bounce from shiny object to shiny object. Pick something, drill down on it. Uh, buy a course or two and when you're sure it's the business for you and you've made a little bit of money from it and you can see it uh, clearly that you can do it and that it does work for you then that's when you go and you write a pretty hefty check to probably a coach that's been in it that's worth millions yeah but you got to be sure at that point and vet these guys heavily make sure that you're getting what you think you're going to get like when I coach people, I can only coach like 20 people a year because I'm the guy that answers the phone. I don't sub you out to a, to a student that did 20 deals last year. A lot of people pay a lot more than they pay me, and then they get a student reading out of a manual. I mean, just make yeah. sure you get what you think you're going to get, and make sure the guy that you're going to study under is someone you would like to be because some of the people that have a lot of money, you wouldn't want to be them. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of respect for that one. That was a good sum up, guys. I don't have anything more to add to that. I will just encourage you. This is that's why we do these business owner spotlights. Go check out. Mitch has got a uh, hundred pages of his book available for free at one uh, thousand houses.com. We'll post the link below. But just in case you're like me and too impatient to go look for the link, that's one zero 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 houses.com. Um, connect with Mitch, connect with me. If you've got ideas for who I should spotlight, send them my way. My contact information is below as well. In the meantime, Mitch, this was awesome. Thank you so, so much for taking time to join me. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Well, for our listeners, you've got it. That's, that's, I mean, I'm just going to leave it at that one. Go out there. Life is up to you. Make it a great one.